Hello, this is Paul, and I welcome you to the second part of this lesson number one. <clears throat> In the first one, we did talk about uh, uh, some hardware and how it is related to software and what is for input and output. And we also were able to share a couple ideas about how there is a combination between the two for input and output combined. Well, now we're going to talk more <coughs> precise about special pieces within your computer that make it work. The first thing I want to talk to you about is uh, the CPU. The CPU stand is uh, called the central processing unit. Now, in there, uh, this central processing unit, you might say that it's the heart of uh, the computer. It has a clock speed, just like uh, our heart has a clock speed that pumps blood throughout our body. Well, uh, this uh, CPU has a clock speed that pumps information throughout the computer for it to operate. Some of it is coming from your uh, keyboard, while other part uh, when you move your mouse around is also a form of input that is processed through there. At the same time, these actions are reflected on the monitor and you are able to see something that you're typing in a document or whatever. However, what I do want you to realize that uh, this clock speed, uh, instead of taking so many uh, beats a minute, why uh, this clock speed is running through thousands of uh, uh, beats every uh, nanosecond. And so it has a lot of time of lag that it can do more than one thing while it's doing nothing. In essence, this uh, uh, CPU uh, can only do one thing at a time. In our computers, th it is uh, designed that way. But since there is a lot of lag time, it will be able to print a document while typing a letter uh, at the same time. And it seems like it's doing more than one thing at a time. But because of the speed of it, it seems like it is uh, doing multiple things. It's just using a buffer to make things work faster. And this buffer is a form of memory where it exchanges uh, things very quickly, much quicker than when you have it stored for long-term storage on what is your hard drive. I'd like to remind you that the CPU, as much as it does, it is a piece of hardware. It can be replaced. It can be upgraded as long as it is uh, compatible with what is called the motherboard. Now this CPU looks like a, a small square piece of equipment that is mounted on the motherboard and it is uh, about the size of a quarter if it was in the form of a square. Taking a quick look at the motherboard we can see where there is a white square in the bottom part of it in the center of the board on this display uh, where it will sit on in that little box and on top of it a uh, uh, heat sink is placed on it. This heat sink will be quite sizable but uh, it, it, the purpose is to keep it from burning up. Now in addition to having that heat sink there is a designated fan that uh, it gets a separate power supply from the, uh, from the uh, uh, power unit and this fan will keep the air flowing over it and prevent it from burning up. Now to take a, a quick look at one of the older boards that were being used in the computers uh, we can see that this motherboard here is uh, where uh, there's a lot of slots in it and these slots are of different types. Uh, as you can see, there are many different sizes there. And I'd like you to realize that when you have a specific board in your computer, uh, this will uh, uh, designate that what is compatible is what you're going to use. And uh, at, you might have different computers, and they will take 
different compatibilities for whatever uh, cards can be inserted in there. Now the card that I'm looking at now, this motherboard, has only a couple slots in it. And uh, that is because the motherboard, uh, which is uh, uh, what is the main circuitry going on, uh, that uh, so much is connected, it has to be going through the motherboard. In other words, uh, if you realize about your telephone system, everything is uh, activated through a central switchboard. And uh, to get to the switchboard, there's a lot of wires up on the, on the uh, uh, telephone poles in order to go through the process. Each, uh, as we uh, have a, a, a phone call to somebody, even if it's next door, uh, it'll have to go all the way to the uh, uh, central switchboard and come back to the phone that we are calling. Well, this is pretty much the process of the motherboard that is there, and uh, it's going to give provide channels for everything to operate. Now, many of the capabilities of the motherboard uh, is now included, and we don't need too many uh, uh, extra cards plugged into the computer. If we do need to plug in a card, it's for a specific reason that uh, most of the operations of somebody on the computer is phased out today. Now I'd like you to remember one thing I haven't heard for a very long time and that is your computer is one dumb machine. It is the dumbest thing around and will do nothing unless you tell it to do something. There are several ways for it to do something, and that is, first of all, give it the proper commands. We do get a whole bunch of uh, programs to get it to do things that we want it to do, but that is because somebody has written the commands for it to perform. Now, there is one thing that the CPU does not do. It doesn't do anything but process one piece of information from one device to another. That's all it is. It is a switchboard on your computer. It will never perform anything at all. And most of all, it has no memory. So it doesn't know anything. And one of the devices you have on your computer is memory. Now, just like with our bodies, we have a heart that beats at a regular rhythm and the blood circulates through our body and we're able to perform only because we have a brain. The brain will judge how fast our heart is beating and it's going to remember the needs of what is uh, uh, going through our body and be able to uh, understand how to make it work. It also has long storage uh, term storage in that brain, but we don't want to talk about that at this time. I'll get into that part later on. But short-term memory, it will perform things that we have to do on the spur of the moment. And that's only because the brain stores certain information to remember how to do things. Well, the same thing is true on the computer. And uh, on the computer, we have a string of chips for random access memory, RAM, R-A-M. Now that means that the computer is going to be able to open files and put them into memory to be able to operate. The CPU can only use this memory while storage is taking place elsewhere. So if a program is not open, it doesn't know anything about that program at all. And uh, uh, once a program is open, it will only work for the limits of what that program has been designed for. So memory plays a very important part to be able to get the computer to operate properly. Now this is a chip from uh, memory of the very old days. And uh, uh, this chip uh, it represents a, 
64K of memory. That's all it is. 64K of memory or 64,000 bits of information. Now, I'd like you to realize that it takes a string of these chips for the computer to have any kind of a, a memory that it can do anything. Because 64K of memory today will not do much. So uh, we go and look at this generation and from the top that small chip is what I'm talking about and on the bottom we have what is called a SIMS chip. Now a SIMS strip is a series of memory chips that are uh, holding space for activity and like I was relating to our brain it would be short-term memory and uh, uh, this is where files of all kinds it could be files that are stored for your operating system it could be files that is for a program and the applications that you develop yourself these are all open with this memory now the more memory that you have and by the way this strip could have chips on both sides and for the maximum amount of memory the chances are they are that way I would like to uh, uh, tell you that uh, uh, each computer has a maximum number of uh, strips that it can hold and on this, uh, uh, mem uh, this uh, motherboard it has uh, uh, four different slots there where memory can be installed. On your computer there might be only two. So the newer the computers the more memory it can hold. And also each strip is going to be able to handle much more memory. The more memory that it has, the smoother the computer will work. Now especially with the CPU uh, and the entire operation or transfer of uh, information from one uh, piece, uh, one object uh, to another on the computer, uh, it deals with only one code. And that is a binary code. It's a series of switches that is on and off. And we'll be getting into this much later on and uh, uh, give you some fine details of what uh, all of this is about. But uh, uh, j just to cover it for now, when we have different peripherals uh, going, uh, being attached to your computer, such as a keyboard, uh, your mouse, uh, a printer, they, they're all different manufacturers. And, and they will have their own codes of operation to be able to bring out the best results possible. Now, just like uh, uh, different manufacturers of different uh, printers, uh, they're all copyrighted, so they need to have their own uh, process of working. And for everything to work together, there has to be a translation of their code uh, uh, by the binary code that the CPU will be able to handle. And uh, this is all performed uh, so that uh, uh, we can have uh, competition within uh, uh, different uh, printers, different monitors, and uh, etc. But Windows has been kept up to date to uh, accept most for formats and know which driver to use. And if it doesn't have the capability of doing this, uh, the manufacturer will give us a, a, a installation disk that will have the drivers that are needed. The only thing I can add to this now is that uh, uh, with each different piece of equipment, it is very easy to plug it into the computer in its proper slot. Uh, most of the uh, peripherals that are external today uh, will make use of what is the universal serial bus or USB port and that, that even makes it easier for connecting almost anything you want. Cameras, uh, printers, your keyboard, your mouse, they all use the USB ports now and uh, anything special. I even have uh, a couple sets of headphones with uh, microphones that uh, 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 connect to the uh, computer as well. Now, one thing I do want you to realize that if you run out of uh, uh, places to plug in a USB device, uh, you can always get a hub 
a small inexpensive hub to be able to expand the number of ports. You can continue to do this until you have 256 different items plugged into your computer and uh, the operating system will handle that. So uh, that is uh, uh, something that uh, can uh, continue to be much more intricate of an operation for what is your needs. And uh, now I'd like to say thank you for this first class, this first lesson. Uh, this is the end of it. There's not much more. It's very basic. And uh, uh, I want to keep it on a simple level so that uh, for the people that I'm addressing in the class, they are people who have never worked with a computer before in their life and uh, they're looking to learn something to be comfortable with a computer and most people that come to my class uh, they already have a computer and don't know how to use them so uh, there's a lot of things going on of interest in our classes uh, this is Paul Jones and uh, I invite you to go to the next lesson and uh, uh, learn more we're going to be talking about the mouse in the next lesson and understand how to uh, uh, use your mouse effectively. So I uh, thank you for your time, and uh, I hope to, that you will continue this, this study. Thank you.